Hey, welcome back guys. So I get a call from an old time customer of mine and said that she hired a handyman to do some work in a walk-in apartment. Now she owns this single family residence right now. She lives on the second floor, but her son's going to be moving in and she decided that it's time to downsize. So she's going to go downstairs into the walk-in apartment. As the handyman was prepping, he noticed some excessive dampness in the front right hand corner of the apartment and thought it was water coming in through the brick. But as he was probing further, he thought that there was some kind of a plumbing issue going on. So she called me in, I went down there, he actually met me there, he opened up the walls for me and it became apparent that there was a steam return line under the ground going back to the steam boiler which was located in the middle of the, of the building that was leaking. So we turned the steam on and as we turned the steam on you could see the, uh, you could actually see the steam vapors coming up out of the ground. So that's what this video is about. Uh, what I did to actually, I abandoned the steel return that was under the ground and went into the boiler room and I ran a new copper line. So uh, if you guys are into stuff like that, stick around. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe, hit that notification bell, and I will see you on the other side of this intro. All right, so as you can see here, the handyman opened up the wall exposed this piping for me. I went there and I actually turned the steam boiler on. This is a split system. There's steam upstairs, downstairs. They have a loop going to some recessed radiation with that copper tubing, if you can believe it. Anyway, take a look at the pipe there, lower left. You can see it's wet. When I, when I bumped up the steam pressure, it started to ooze. So it was apparent that that piece going under the ground in the front portion of the building was compromised. And here is another shot of that. And you can see that copper. They they rigged this 5.8 copper through some convector radiators and tied a circulator pump to it. How it works, I don't know, but it works, believe it or not. Hey guys, don't ask me how this lower hot water system was working. They had a thermostat on the wall. They had a little Taco 007 pump behind the steam boiler circulate mortar around in this 5.8 soft copper tubing that went from the front living room to the rear bedroom to the kitchen to the bathroom. I don't know how it worked. Don't ask. Thank God I got it to work again once I got everything put back together again because I turned up the steam, got everything going, turned on that pump, made a racket, but all the radiators got hot. Let's get back to the video. Anyway, here's another shot of that pipe. You can see in the middle there the rust. As I said, I pumped the pressure up. And as the steam boiler was running, you know, this started to ooze more and more and more. So, uh, you know, we made the decision to run a new copper return above the ground. And this is the other end. This is on the inside of the convector cabinet. The opposite end, the, the right end of that T is the, the piece that I have to remove to start my new run of copper. And you'll see that in an upcoming uh, clip. And here that return is running under the ground, underneath the carpet there, underneath the concrete, all the way to the boiler room, which is centrally located. So from the boiler room, there's another bedroom beyond that with another return under the ground. At this time, I'm assuming it's not leaking. This is in the boiler room. If you take a look down there, right above that drain valve, that elbow coming out of the ground, that's where it came out of the ground and then went back into the boiler return. And then uh, I gotta tell you, it was not easy to get to. Uh, here's another shot of it. It comes up out of the ground. Uh, you got two elbows and goes into a T there. And I believe in this next clip coming up, you're going to see the, the room I had to squeeze into in order to, to, to you know, get these fittings out of there and, and, and prep it. Look at that. I mean, there's the water heater. There are some return lines coming from the boiler. And I had to squeeze myself in between there, basically bending down. I couldn't even kneel down. It was just, uh, it was a rough job, but... Uh, it worked out. So uh, initially I cracked a couple of elbows and then I, I cut the elbow uh, in that T, coming out of that T, I actually cut it off. And then I, I sliced with a uh, multi-tool that piece on the nipple because I wanted to leave the nipple so I could screw onto it. And there's that piece, I just split it, popped it open. And I wanted to leave that nipple intact because there was no way I was gonna get that nipple out, at least with the room I had. And there's that nipple, and it was in good condition, so I just left it, and that's what I was going to tie onto. And I used a union to tie onto it, and you'll see that coming up later. So I decided at this point, let's move to the front. 
start prepping everything there. And uh, as you can see, there's a convector. Uh, there's a situation in the corner. And I have to now cut that piece out and get the remaining piece inside the T out of there. And, you know, that was a little bit of a pain in the butt. But, you know, you do what you got to do. I mean, sometimes these jobs, I don't know what's going to happen on these jobs. And uh, there you go. There's a shot of that T. And uh, obviously, you know, it wasn't easy to do. And you know, with my sawzall, I actually cut that piece out. I left a little bit sticking out of the T so I could... Uh, use my hand tools to, to cut the stub out. And as you can see there, I had already cut a slit. I couldn't use a power tool, it wouldn't fit inside. That's one inch black pipe. So I had to use hand tools to make the cut for me to collapse that nipple. And I basically used my, uh, you know, handheld hacksaw and my little mini saw. I used the, uh, the handheld hacksaw with the yellow handle for, for most of the cut. And then I finished it with that little, uh, fine Linux uh, hacksaw to, to cut through. And then I, I popped it and got the piece out. And uh, that was time to, uh, it was time to put everything back together again. I also wanted to cut out some wood in the corner because uh, I didn't, you know, I was going to be in there with a torch and I didn't feel like torching this lady's house. But you could see all the, 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 uh, the dampness and, the, and, and, you know, that the steam uh, kind of was starting to destroy the plaster and everything else. And here I put a nipple in the T and the only reason I did that was I needed something that I could grab onto to tighten everything up. And, uh, you know, there was no way I ordinarily would use a male adapter and make everything copper, but I didn't do that. So I got this in and then I ran my first 10 foot piece uh, along the wall there. Uh, I put it where the handyman wanted it. He, he gave me a reference on where to hang it because he's going to box that in. He's just going to simply box that in with some lumber. And um, you'll see uh, here's a coupling that uh, I tied my next 10-foot piece into, which got me into the boiler room. And you'll see that coming up here. I, uh, you know, got everything strapped up nicely. And, you know, he'll be able to box that in once they, you know, do the repairs on the walls. They'll put new carpet in fix the floor up or whatever they're going to do. I, I don't know exactly what the repair is going to be, but at any rate, um, yeah. And then it was time to get back behind the uh, boiler there. And you can see what I did was with my blue block and, uh, you know, my monster blue tape, I screwed a union onto that nipple. And in the other end, I used a male adapter and, and then I just made the complete copper repair. That was it. Filled up the boiler, ran the steam pressure, everything worked, you know, uh, got that uh, baseboard heating system working again. And yeah, there it is. Pain in the butt. But I got it done. So there you go, guys. You know, the handyman and I had pre-planned where he wanted me to put the return up on the wall because he was going to box that in after all was said and done. Now, bear in mind, there is still a return going to the rear, picking up the uh, returns from the rear radiators going back to the steam boiler. And if that thing leaks... Uh, we're not really going to know if it leaks or not. The thing is this, guys. She had an automatic water feeder on the steam boiler. So she had no way of knowing if there was a leak under the ground because this thing was just putting in water. Every time the water level dropped, the feeder would just feed. So God knows how long that was leaking. I suspect if she had to manually put water into the boiler, she probably would have found out a long time ago that she had a leak under the ground. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of when I post a new video. Also, hit that like button. YouTube loves it when you hit that like button. They'll show these videos to more eyes. I look forward to seeing you guys on my next one. Stay well, and as always, happy plumbing.